Hey everybody, David here with Piano Technician Academy, and I'm here with the oh-so-talented, always-moving Michael Stilwell. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> so, I wanted to talk today about you and, and kind of all that you've built here with Piano Technician Academy through really a career of piano servicing. And I think a lot of people don't know that you have your roots really firmly grounded in piano technology as a technician. Right. So yeah. I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So my grandfather, Ralph Stilwell, was um, uh, very influential in our industry. He, um, well, he worked for Yamaha for 25 years as their head tech for the United States. He worked on Little Red Schoolhouse. Um, and they would just, Yamaha would just fly him all over the country when Yamaha was really trying to get into the United States. Um, and then he also taught my uncle um, to tune, who tuned as well. But the family business was in Decatur, Illinois, and I'm in Arizona. Yeah. So when I got into it, I was 19. I decided I wanted to get into this. My grandfather was already in a nursing home and suffered from Alzheimer's. At the so. time that you were getting started. Right. So I couldn't really get help from him. I did talk to him about it and um, went and visited him, and I, got, I inherited a lot of his tools and obviously his last name, which has helped a lot. Yeah. Um, and but by then he was out of it obviously because of his Alzheimer's my uncle was already out of it he just kind of dabbled in it in and out um, in his earlier years but he had moved on to other things and he was in another state so when I graduated from a piano tuning school I kind of had to start from scratch I had a name I had a bunch of tools I had a certification and that was it so yeah. I did the first like five or six careers or five or six years of my career in home sure. tuning <clears throat> building a clientele here and then uh, one day I was driving to dinner with a friend to go meet a friend and I was t-boned in a car and I broke my wrist my tuning wrist. tuning wrist yeah so I was jobless and so during that time I said well I need to make money how do I do this how do I stay in my industry so I did two things one I started buying pianos and fixing them up at my house as I could and then selling them out of my house and two, I started a piano tuning school. I was like, well, I know all this stuff. Yeah. Maybe I should just do like a training program and sure. see where it goes. And that was a real rough start because we had some bad investors at the time that didn't work okay. out, that we had to end up buying this material back and yeah. relaunching and everything. But that was, geez, when was that? nine, eight or nine years, nine ago. years ago. So um, that's how the school got started. And then I was, you know, buying and selling pianos out of my house, and eventually my wife was like, there are way too many pianos in this house, you need to get them out and go do something sure. else with them. So I bought a piano from a guy who owned a storage facility, okay. like literally like climate controlled storage unit. And so I started selling pianos out of a storage unit, and it didn't last really? very long. Yeah, it was kind of a weird thing, but it worked. <laughs> and I could get like three grands in this room. And Sure, and it's climate controlled. Yeah, it was climate controlled, and they weren't in my house, and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So, that kind of grew and I then got a little office and then I could do five pianos out of that office. Sure. And then I convinced the owner of that office building to build out his warehouse into a space for me and then I could do like 12 pianos in there. And then I went to retail and I had a little retail spot that would not stop leaking every time. Here in Arizona we have monsoon so yeah. we have like this season where it just rains non-stop like an insane amount. So we moved out of there and then got another location and now we're at this location and this is our, we just expanded for the fourth time in this location. Wow. Um, so now, we this whole time, I would just buy one piano, yeah. sell that piano, and then go buy two pianos. So I never was drawing a salary. Okay. And so and I was- And it sounds like you weren't going into crazy amounts of debt to do this. Right, and I was still tuning. Okay. So it was like mostly appointment based. So I was going in-home tuning. So you're doing in-home tuning. You're Creating a school. Running a school at that point. Running I mean, a I had, school. We had students and everything. We yeah. had people helping me with overflow of, you know, t teachers, assistants and stuff. Yeah. But I never drew a salary from the store, from selling pianos. Um, and that allowed us to grow. And now we're like 28,000 square feet. Yeah. We have like 198 pianos in inventory right now. We have another guy that kind of runs the store mm -hmm. so that I can focus on the school. Um, and for, I don't know, the last eight years, I've been kind of the main student instructor yep. um, with the help of some other technicians that kind of take the overflow, some teacher's assistants and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's kind of how and, and, and it's turned out. And all this time, I'm just amazed that you've been able to balance everything and, and do so well. Because, ADD, man. 
DVD Bouncing to the max. Yeah. <laughs> You're the same thing. I'm the same way. So, and I think that's why you and I get along because yeah. we, we're always moving and we're kind of yeah. a bunch of ideas. I think it drives other people nuts. Oh yeah, a lot of our employees yeah. on both sides of our, our businesses are like, why won't you stop for a second and just <laughs> calm down? But it's hard, you don't want to. It's hard, we don't want, I, mean, I think we love it. Yeah. I think that's a big thing is we both love the industry. Yeah. Yeah, and, totally. and we've been doing it for a while. Now, um, one of the things that partnering with uh, Piano Technician Academy and Artists and Piano Services is it's going to alleviate all the technical training questions from your plate. Yeah. So artists and piano technicians, instructors are going to be instructing the students in, in, in how to do the actual work of becoming a piano technician. Right. But your role has changed to... Student coordinator. Student coordinator. And what does that look like? It's basically like... Say somebody's thinking about becoming a piano technician, mm -hmm. you do a Google search, you're going to find us. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of schools. Ours is definitely the largest one as far as student enrollment, graduation rates, all that stuff by like kind of a lot. So it just got to the point where it was just like, you know, I'm working with students who are enrolled asking questions, and then I'm working with people who are even, you know, considering becoming a piano technician. And I'm working with people who are considering our school or another school or whatever. And then on top of that, we have other technicians who are coming to us going, hey, we need to hire some students or piano stores. Oh my gosh, like seriously, like in India too, just like, hey, we need some yeah. technicians. We'll pay them X amount of money if yeah. you fly them out to India and da, 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 da. Well, and I think that's a really interesting thing that you have businesses, uh, stores calling you from Piano Technician Academy saying, I need your graduates. Right. Schools which, too. And schools, which is awesome that, and I don't think people know that, you, you go to Piano Technician Academy, you, you go through the course, you get uh, certified. Yeah. There's avenues for you that you may not even know about that right. you know, people are approaching the school and saying, hey, we need people. I was one of those people. Yeah, that's how we met. That's how we met. <laughs> yeah, I called them and I said, I, need, I have two locations we're wanting to start. I need some qualified candidates. And you're like, who are you? Yeah. I kind of knew who you Yeah, me either. But I was being cool. But yeah. I knew be cool. <laughs> well, dude, it, it happens all the time. There's constantly people coming up and asking us for students and how to get in and everything. And it's one of these these trades that, like, yeah. like luckily, I kind of grew up around this. Playing in my grandpa's workshop in Decatur, Illinois, and going to dinners and stuff with technicians and meeting all these people who worship my grandpa. So it was like... You know, for me, it was a natural thing to be yeah. like, well, I want to do what he did. My sure. dad was self-employed, my uncle was self-employed, my grandpa, my great-grandpa, my great-grandpa, my great-great-grandpa. So it's like one of these things that's like yeah. kind of an obvious yeah. path, but not for everyone. No. Every, you know, other people get into it because it's weird. We have students that get into it because they're an engineer. Yeah. And they want to work with their hands. And then we get other people that are into it. They're like, hey, I play piano for a living at a church or a touring, touring band or whatever, yeah. and I want to get into this side of it now and make money staying home or whatever. So like there's all different reasons people get in. And believe it or not, that's a ton of work for me. Because <laughs> it's like you're constantly talking yeah. to people and kind of like validating their reason to get in and pointing them in the right direction. And there's times where I'm like, dude, this school is not for you. Yeah. Like you should join the guild. You're already to this point. Go become an RPT. Yeah. Go get a mentorship, get an apprenticeship, or like whatever, like sometimes it's not the best option to take an mm -hmm. online course. And you're gonna be able to help students or per prospective students, right? you know, answer decide those questions that. and decide that. Yeah. So, Well, how can students get a hold of uh, Piano Technician Academy as well as yourself? Well, uh, pianotechnicianacademy.com is our website. So on that website, there's contact forms, phone numbers. Um, we do have a direct phone. I'm here all the time, so you can always call and talk to us in person yeah. um, or email or whatever. Um, we do videos with um, people who are out of state sometimes or out of the country sometimes just to help interact with them. But typically it's phone calls. You know, like the industry is like this weird, scary thing. Yeah. And you think like, oh, I'm going to get into this. I'm not going to know what I'm doing. And all these older technicians are just going to look down on me for getting into it like this because they got into it in a different way. They yeah. took an apprenticeship. They're a generational tuner or whatever. But dude, like, I'm a generational tuner. Yeah. I got into it. I'm a generational tuner that did like both. So I did it and I took a certification course, yeah. like a correspondence course, and then built off. And like the cool thing is like, yeah, there's kind of jerks and yeah. whatever in, in every industry. industry. But in the most part, like the guild is 
The, the guild is there to support people getting into the trade. Totally. It's a freaking guild. Yeah. That's what a guild is. We're supposed to meet and build each other up and do all this stuff. And I've just experienced in my local chapter that that's exactly what it is. And now I go like travel around and meet with other chapters and stores and stuff for, yeah. again, the student coordinator side of like meeting with other stores to figure out where to connect people and who, what players are in what state and everything. Yeah. And like, in general, like that's what the guild is. It's really cool. And it's so foreign to like people who aren't yeah. in our industry. Cause they're like, well, aren't I just meeting with my competitor? Yeah, you are meeting with the competitors, but it's like, it doesn't work like that. No. Like they're looking at it like, thank gosh, somebody's getting into this yeah. trade. And it can be kind of a lonely trade. Yeah. And so to be able to just go to those meetings, those, uh, whether it's the, the, the conventions or yeah. just the monthly meetings, to be able to see somebody that you're like, yeah, I just was at the piano and it was like this. And like, oh, I just was at another yeah. one. It's this bonding experience. And that's actually quite valuable yeah. just emotionally. Yeah, so. piano nerding. Piano nerding, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you for talking with me. Um, yeah. There's more to come, and uh, there's a lot of work on your end and my end to come. So uh, we're excited, and uh, thank you for tuning in. Thanks, guys.